Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, taking sort of a first look at Anodyne. Um, I picked this up, I recorded, you know, a first thoughts video and the capture software decided to break and not actually save the video. So I have wiped my save file, we're going to do another first look sort of thing, but technically it's not my first thoughts because I did already play the game for about an hour. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're just going to start this up. We're going to play it through for, I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe a bit less. Um, and I'm going to say, tell you what I think of it. Uh, there's also Crossnick Plus here, which I'm going to be checking out as well. I'm pretty excited about that one, but for the moment, Anodyne. Let's go. Um, I've heard this game is quite similar to Link's Awakening. Um, that's how it was advertised by its developers, so... That's good, because as you probably know, if you've been watching my videos, I like Link's Awakening a lot. Uh, it's got a pixel art style, as you can see. Uh, got a gate there. Here's our title screen. I press A. I forget. I've already forgotten who the mysterious voice is, so I'm not sure what kind of voice I should use for it. Hello? Young? Hey! Oh, you can hear me? Good, now listen. You're about to wake up. You will use the directional buttons to move around. So yeah, we start with a little bit of a tutorial. Uh, this is Young, our player character. You can move with the D-pad, you can also move with the analog stick if you want to, but because the controls are completely digital, there's not much reason to use the analog stick. Unless you just find it more comfortable, which is fine. But yeah, if you tilt the stick just a little bit, you do move at full speed. Uh, you will press the A button to interact with objects and people around you. So there's a little simple puzzle here to introduce you to doing simple puzzles. There we go, now we can get through. And you'll press the X button to access the menu, which will provide you with information about yourself and your surroundings. So uh, yeah, you press X, you get this menu, there's normally a map. Uh, items, you'll see what they mean in a bit. Cards, also blank. You can save here. Save, there we go. Config, the only option is this. I didn't bother to turn that on before, I'm not quite sure what it does. Maybe it pops up a prompt or something? When you step on a checkpoint? Uh, you'll see what the checkpoints look like in a bit. Uh, you can also press plus to open the same menu. Plus or X do the same thing. Uh, why do Y, A, B do nothing right now? All the shoulder buttons do nothing. Uh, the only other button that does anything at this point is minus, which is a bit weird. Uh, here's what minus does. Yeah, it just stretches the whole screen. Um, you get like weird rectangular pixels. Um, kind of reminds me of Game Boy Advance, because when you played an original Game Boy or Game Boy Color game on the Game Boy Advance, there was a button that let you do this, because the Game Boy Advance had a wider screen, uh, and you could stretch out all your games so that, you know, they'd fill the screen instead of just being in the middle of it, which I thought was a pretty cool feature at the time. I, I used it a lot. With this game, I, I think I prefer to do it like this, just so you get, uh, the correct pixel aspect ratio instead of having everything weirdly stretched. Um... But that does mean you do get some black space around the edges of the screen, which is not great. It's kind of annoying. I kind of wish there was a border option of some kind, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, a lot of games that have, like, square screens on the Switch do have a border option. Undertale, for example, was designed for square screens as well, and it will draw some really nice borders around the game. There is writing scrawled on this rock. Sometimes if you talk to people multiple times, they have new things to say. Just like in real life. Amazing. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna head up here. Well, it's about time. Uh, I mean... Greetings, young. I am Sage, the village elder. You have been summoned here because the darkness has spread across the land. The darkness seeks the legendary Briar to use the Briar's power for evil. You must reach it first. You must protect the briar. Okay. Uh, we can keep talking to Sage here to get more information, as as that uh, thing back there mentioned. 
enter the active portal on your left to begin your quest. While standing on a checkpoint, press A to save your progress and set it as your respawn point if you die. Bip, just like that. Easy peasy. Uh, this is the statue we can interact with. The village elder in name only, for he is neither. I probably shouldn't be doing my old man voice if he's not an elder. Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't bode well that you're still dallying about here. Enter the portal to begin your quest. The briar, and by extension, the world are in dire need. So yeah, um, the only portal we can access right now will be the one on the left that he was talking about. So we'll head over here. Uh, and here's the portal we can go into. Stop in like that. And you can see we've arrived in this area. Um, so we can stand on this portal to go back if we want to. Like that. Boop. Uh, it's a checkpoint here. We have, like, no weapons or anything yet, so we can't really interact with most of the stuff we see. Uh, this is a locked door. This door is locked. Uh, we don't have a way to open it just yet, but we will. Uh, we'll find a key shortly. And if we head this way, uh, you can see there's, like, a gate over here. We can't get through, but if we step on the switch there, easy peasy. Uh, there are some enemies in this room. We have no weapon yet, which is a problem, but if we open this chest here... An engraving on the broom handle reads, press A to sweep. Yeah, this is our primary weapon. It's a broom. We, we sweep with a broom, and that defeats our enemies. Uh, I don't know if there are any other weapons in the game, um... But a broom is what you have to begin with. <laughs> pretty funny. Um, it works more or less like a sword in like Zelda 1 for example, it just stabs forward a bit. Um, kind of wish it would swing a bit more, have a bit more of a wide arc, but I think you might be able to unlock stuff that adjusts that, so something to look forward to. Uh, the reason we need to get the broom first is if we go this way, there's a bunch of enemies, you can see the chest there behind that gate, the only way to open the gate is to defeat all the enemies, which we couldn't do without the broom. We'd have no weapon. Uh, these are health, by the way. Um, we have full health at the moment, so we don't really need them. This key may be used a single time to open up a locked barrier. So you can see on the top screen we have one key. On the top screen, the top of the screen, the sub-map thingy. This is only one screen. Um, yeah, we just head this way. Boop, there we go. Uh, here we want to stab that slime. There we go. Uh, these crack thingies, it's just like in Link's Awakening, if you stand on them for too long, they'll turn into holes and you'll fall through, so watch out for that. That room's a little creepy, not really sure what's going on there. Okay, this is, this stuff is dirt, so we can actually sweep some up. Your broom is now full of dust, attack again to place it. So, with the dust, you can basically move it around the grid by attacking it with your broom and putting it somewhere different. It's an interesting mechanic. <laughs> uh, this is a little portal we can take. Which leads to somewhere else in the world. Uh, we look at our map. The map is only a local map, so it doesn't really tell us like where this area is. We can see the one room, as you can see. Uh, we can walk back to the Nexus, which is that place with the doors where we started whenever you want, so... Um, we're not stuck here or anything. Heads up! Ooh. Sorry about that, I was going way too fast. <sighs> I've never seen you before. Are you a fellow traveler? Huh? You want to protect the briar from the evil darkness? Well, I have no clue what you're talking about, but sounds cool, I guess. I've just been out and about, peddling my wares. What? No, I'm not a salesman. Wares is the name of my bicycle. <laughs> I, mean, I already saw this joke, but I still think that's absolutely hilarious. Peddling my wares is wares is the name of my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll run into each other again sometime. I'll let you know if I hear anything about that briar. 
There they go. I think there she goes, but unfortunately one criticism I have is this game doesn't tell you people's pronouns very much, and I wish it did, so that I knew whether I was correctly gendering everyone. Young here doesn't really seem to have a gender to begin with, it's just a person. I mean, they're just a person. Anyway, uh, we're headed towards the first uh, dungeon, basically, which is in this direction. A couple of bats here. We'll sweep them away. So yeah, obviously I've already seen the game once, but I know what to expect to an extent. Uh, here's the sage again. Soon your skills will be put to the test, young. In order to make it through this temple alive, you will need both strength and intellect. And I assume that by this point you have found a weapon? What? I, I mean... Yes, of course, a broom. Uh, just as was foretold in the legend. I've seen a broom in a legend. It was on the map of a janitor closet. <laughs> so yeah, um... Sage is not impressed with the broom. Okay, so here's the first dungeon. Um, you can see on the map, we can only see the current room. Oh, we can actually walk back to the entrance. So we can get ourselves out of here if we get stuck. Uh, but it's pretty much, you know, a typical sort of uh, Zelda gamey dungeon. Uh, we got this uh, shield monster here. You gotta hit it from the top. If you hit it from another side, it won't take any damage because of the shield. Get a key there. Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, pretty much what you'd expect from a Zelda game. It does remind me a lot of Link's Awakening, um, as I mentioned. Uh, you can see that the dust is actually blocking these beams, which is a very useful little feature of how it works. If you move the dust there, you can see it helps us get through. I'm actually going to go this way first, though, so we'll come back to that. Oh yeah, I forgot about this room. Um, so yeah, um... Peripheral vision is the hive of demons. I don't know what this room is about. It's just weird. <laughs> okay, um, ow. Yeah, it's a little fiddly because, like, the beams and stuff move according to the grid, but you don't. You can move a little more freely. Uh, it's okay, though. Now, you always take one slice of damage from stuff, I think. I've never seen a half slice. Uh, which is a little annoying. Because... Some stuff I think should only do a half slice of damage, but it doesn't. These are easy to deal with. There we go. Uh, we'll use this checkpoint here. The checkpoints don't matter too much. You'll respawn at the last one you stood on, like they said. Uh, we do want to kill everything in this room because there's another one of those gratings at the bottom. There we go. Now we can go down. Got a couple of slimes in this room. We don't need to kill them. There's no, like, nothing giving us a reason to kill them, but we will. Because this is a video game and we are violent. <laughs> oh, yeah, that gets to this chest, which has a card in it. So that's a slime card. Uh, basically what cards do... I'll bring up the menu. See the card section here. Um, there's, like, collectible cards for various characters in the game. Uh, the first one we got is the slime. And you can read them to get some information. Jello there, young, so good to finally meet you. Why don't you sit for a minute? I was just putting on some tea. <laughs> and yeah, you can look at all of them, they have a little bit of a description like that. Uh, but you also need to get a certain number of cards to unlock some stuff, which we'll see later on. We have a key so we can go through here. Cool bats in here. Uh, here, you just need to use some careful timing to slip through here when there's an opening. There we go. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to come in over here because there's nothing over here. You can't move these rocks or anything, but you can if you want. You can come in that way. It's kind of useless. <laughs> Ow, taking a lot of hits. Ugh, I got hit backwards between the rooms. That's bad. I didn't think that was possible because of the way the enemies work in this game. They don't usually cross room boundaries. 
Anyway, um, okay, we've got some more lasers here. Here's a little bit of a puzzle. You gotta get some dirt here and move it to there. It's pretty easy, but it's, it's a neat little puzzle, I think. Uh, here you can notice that these uh, beams actually will destroy the shield monsters as well. Which can be handy if you want to destroy a shield monster for some reason. Uh, I think I want to go down first, actually. Okay, um... Yeah, we've got another shield monster. We can just kill that ourselves. There we go. And that's the other... This is the room we went into on the other side already. Uh, but there's a key here, so we have to come in on this side to get that. Now if we head north... Through here. Uh, there's another one of these guys. Uh, you actually... Yeah, you just want to kill that one, but the other one, you don't want to kill. You want to push him up a little bit, like this, because you need to press both of these switches. And the only way to do that is to have the monster press one of them. So yeah, yeah clever little Zelda-style puzzles here and there. Uh, I think I'll take the key door first here. Yeah, I think that was a good move. Uh, so we've got a bunch of monsters here to deal with. Let's take out these guys first, pretty easy. There we go. Uh, to get the slimes, we'll just move that over there, so it blocks that. We can take them out. No, pro no problem. I kind of wish there was an indication on screen of whether there's dust in your broom or not. As far as I can tell, there's nothing, so it's a bit confusing. Okay, so that's the second card. It's a card for these shieldy friends. Are you an Ookchot? My mom always warned me about the dangerous Ookchot. I guess those things are called Ookchots. Uh, so here, you've got two patches of dirt, and you have to make use of that fact, basically, like this, uh, to make your way up here slowly. Pretty clever. You can walk on the dirt that's blocking things and you're fine, which is kind of weird, but it sort of makes sense. Press this switch, there we go. Now we've unlocked the path to this room. Uh, we're going to want to use this dirt to block that, so we can get through here. Uh, there we go. Oops. Uh, what have I missed? Missed anything? I think, I, I think I've been everywhere. Yeah, it looks like it. Unfortunately, there's nothing like a compass as far as I know, so you can't really check if you've missed a room. Oh, isn't it cute? Precious little young, playing the hero. But I have witnessed every step you have taken in the land, and let me tell you, young, not everyone here is as honest as me. Be careful who you trust. So this is the first boss. Um, it's a creepy face. Uh, it's gonna swing this thing around to hit us with. Basically, we want to hit the face with our broom a bunch of times. Uh, and it's gonna start putting out dirt like this. Uh, and when it does that, you have to move the dirt up a bit. And you'll see why in a second. Because it shoots out this beam here and the dirt will block it. So you want to do that so the beam won't hit you because there's no other way to avoid it, basically. And yeah, this boss is annoying. I don't know if you can tell. I... I took a few tries on this. Um, there's not really any way to like upgrade your abilities before this, so you just have to be really good at this one boss. Which I find frustrating. Um, there we go. I will be with you, young, whenever you're alone. And remember my advice on your little adventure. So yeah, that's the first boss. Uh, when we blow it up, I do wish you could turn off these screen flashes or reduce them a bit because I think this is a bit overwhelming, even though I'm not photosensitive, I know people who are, and yeah. Uh, then you get this little firefly, basically this is a heart container. Uh, if you talk to it, it'll fly up into the corner there, and basically eat an extra slot into your health bar, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got uh, an extra one now, now we're gonna go this way. Uh, here's a uh, sage again. At this point, you are still weak. If you hope to protect the Briar from the darkness, you must face 
Your fears, the cards you will find in this chest, and others like it, are symbols of your growth, so acquiring them is absolutely vital to your quest. Uh, so yeah, if we go to the card here, uh, it will be... Yeah, the boss that we just fought gets added to our collection. I will be with you, young, whenever you are alone. I'm um, going talk to this as well. Acquiring cards is vital to your quest. Acquiring cards is also vital for other quests, such as earning credit or purchasing alcoholic beverages. <laughs> I like the jokes in this game. They're really silly. <laughs> uh, anyway, we get this key. This is our main reward for defeating the dungeon. We get this green key. We can open various gates here and there with the key. So we will be doing that. Uh, we can't get past this statue yet. Statue doesn't look like it will be moving anytime soon. I'm guessing we'll get like a new ability or something that makes it move. Maybe we'll come from the bottom and push it up into that slot there, but I don't know yet. Uh, so we can walk our way back out of the dungeon we were just in. And then we can head into another entrance. Uh, I can't go that way yet. Damn, I didn't activate any others, so I'll have to go back to the beginning. <laughs> Actually, no, I think it'd probably be faster. Uh, there is one, like, just outside the dungeon, but I don't think I remembered to activate it. Uh, if I go into the dungeon like this, and then I uh, return to entrance, and then just go outside, that's got to be faster. There we go. Alright, yeah, if I just go this way, I believe. This is the one I was thinking of, yeah. And that's just that warp there. <laughs> okay, so uh, now we have that key. We can get into some extra places. Unfortunately, the key is, you know, it's just a key. All it does is unlock some stuff. We don't have any extra items that we can use for attacks or anything like that yet. Once a man came and installed a mirror in our bathroom, I was afraid that there was a hidden camera inside of it. I scoured every inch of the wooden frame, spraying Murphy's oil soap into the cracks, thinking I might short-circuit the wires. Of course, I never found anything. I don't know if that's important. I have no idea. <laughs> um, we use this checkpoint here. So, uh, now that we have that new key, we can actually head back. Uh, this sort of direction, the way we came. And just keep going a little bit further. Uh, I do kind of wish the game's music was a bit catchier. It's sort of atmospheric and quiet, I guess. And it doesn't, doesn't appeal to me as much as, say, uh, Zelda theme does when you're wandering around an overworld. Uh, this is where we came in, right? Yes. So if we head over this way, uh, a couple more slimes, let's just deal with them. A couple more slimes. Okay, see that door with the four on it? Yeah, if I talk to it, the gate stares, petrified. It won't open until it senses four cards. So yeah, your total card count has to be at least four to get into that area. Um, which we can't do, obviously, because we only have three cards. I bet you're reading a rock because you don't have any friends. What a rude rock. That's just so rude. God. I kind of wish also that the broom button was the B button. Um, I've seen a lot of Zelda likes do this on the Switch, but the actual like Zelda games on the Switch use the B button as the sword button. I mean, Breath of the Wild uses the Y button, but you know, Link's Awakening and Link to the Past and stuff like that, it uses the B button. Whereas these games it uses the A button and I don't like it. Uh, this game and Blossom Tales and a few others had that problem in my... And I don't think you can bring up the controls in any of them, which is a bit frustrating. Oh, you can in Blossom Tales, but it's all, always the main action button as well. And I want B and A to be separate, but you can't do that. Anyway, this is a card. It's that guy we met a little while ago. Uh, which means we have four cards. So we can go back to that little gate up there that said you need four cards, and we can get in. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Sensing four cards, the gate decides to open. 
Okay, um, we're gonna go up this way. A couple of bats here. Just take them out, it's very easy. I'll open this gate so we can keep going. Uh, a couple more enemies here. Basically, this is a short enemy gauntlet sort of thing. Let's go take out a bunch of enemies. It's not too tricky. I might take a hit or two, but they drop health pretty quickly, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. I say they don't drop any health. Eh, I'll be fine. I'll manage. Okay, that is like a wolf or something. I think. The, the sprites are a little uh, lacking in detail for some of these things. I think it's a wolf. <laughs> anyway, you defeat it and you can keep going. And here is another one of these little health bug thingies. Uh, oddly enough, this is a full heart container. Like, if you were playing, you know, a Zelda game, uh, you would get a piece of heart, and Blossom Tales does the same sort of thing. Like, when you do a side quest, you get just a piece of heart, and you need four of them, or five of them, or some other... You need some, like, more than one of them in order to actually get a heart container. But here, doing this little side quest just gives you a whole heart container. Which is interesting. Um, I suppose since that you, you never lose, like, a half heart, like, you always lose an entire heart every time you get hit. They kind of need to give you more hearts than other games would. Anyway, uh, the main area we're supposed to be going to is down this way. Uh, you can see there's a locked gate here with a green lock on it. If you look at the key we have, it has a green, like, lock on the top of it. So yeah, it will work. Uh, we didn't actually lose the green key, interestingly enough. There will be, uh... We see if we can still have it. Uh, there are some other gates that also have that green lock, which I found interesting because generally, you know, these kind of locks, there's just the one gate that opens up and that's all they do, or the one, you know, the big door or whatever, rather than multiple things that you can do with them. Uh, so yeah, here, this, this uh, sub area, uh, we can't break these things yet. I assume there's an item that lets you do that, uh, but we can't yet, so yeah. Uh, here's another of these little warp points. I'm just gonna jump on there. Uh, you can see it's behind this fence, so we can now press that button, open this up. I don't know what the point of that is, because, you know, you, you can't use these until you've gone through them from the other side anyway. So it doesn't really matter if this area was open to begin with. It wouldn't let you get anywhere. It's a bit strange. Uh, just some enemies there. Over here is a shop. Uh, so this shopkeeper here... Ah, you have a fine eye. You need a better weapon, don't you? Allow blow your enemies to pieces for only four ninety nine ninety nine. You'll notice that uh, we don't have money anywhere. Like we haven't been collecting money like you would in Zelda, no rupees or whatever. The reason for that, apparently, is this: that money sack will allow you to accumulate money that you find in the land. It's yours for a mere eight hundred sixty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So yeah, that money sack, I think we need that before we can collect any money at all. And we obviously can't get it from this guy because we don't have that money. Welcome, welcome, my friend Young. The name's Prasentoff Pr Finti Prasentoff. Take a look around at my shop and see if anything catches your eye. Fine morning out, isn't it, my friend? A fine morning for shopping. I just wish I had a box to carry my inventory around. That's a hint. <laughs> uh, we can't go this way yet. Uh, gotta come from the other side. It's like a backtracking path. Uh, if we go to, through these slimes here, uh, there is actually a box around, and we want to get it, because we will get a reward from that guy for doing so. And we would like a reward from that guy. Uh... Okay, here there's like a little plant that spits out death. Like there we go. Up here, uh, there's... This guy, what are you doing here, punk? Get lost. I caught it fair and square. I feel like this could be explained better. I did already figure this out on my previous playthrough, but what's in that box is a cat. And if you bring another cat, you can scare this guy off for some reason. I don't know why, because he's not indicating that he's scared of cats. But I let it go, not in a million years. But yeah, if you get another cat and come to that spot, then you can scare the guy off, get the box, and free the other cat that's in the box. I don't know how you're supposed to figure any of that out, but basically you want to find this cat. Oh, you are young, the chosen one. 
Oh my gosh, what an honor! My name is Miao Zhao Tuan Er. Tuan Er? Chosen one in training. Could I follow you around for a bit to watch a chosen one in action? So yeah, the cat follows you. Uh, then you just gotta head your way. Uh, the cat can swim for some reason. I kind of thought you'd have to get the cat over the water in a special way, but you don't. It's easy. What's that cool stone thing, Young? D does it make you go back in time? It doesn't. That'd be cool, but it doesn't. Uh, yeah, but he's come up here to this guy. What are you doing here, punk? Get lost. I caught it fair and square. Wrong. <laughs> Is that another cat? Wrong. And see, it just scares that guy off. I don't really get it. I guess he's supposed to be like a goldfish or something. Young opens and takes the box. Something is inside it. It's another cat. Oh. Hey, Meow. I'm so glad you're safe. Um, uh, thanks for the hand, Young. Okay, so now what we gotta do... Come with? Hmm, doesn't matter. Uh, we go back to the shopkeeper now, we give him this box. Ah, ah, box. Thank you so much. Now I can carry all my inventory home at night and back in the morning. As a token of my gratitude, take these stylish biking shoes. So, uh, the shoes were over here, so he's replaced them with a vacuum cleaner, which I think we probably want because our weapon is a broom and we move dust around and stuff. I feel like a vacuum cleaner would be a useful upgrade. Uh, but these biking shoes, I don't think we can wear them. I think we just have to give them to someone. Specifically this uh, gal over here, whom you might remember from earlier. Remember me? I forgot to introduce myself last time. I only introduced my bicycle, Wes. Uh, my name is Mitra. So, how have you been, young? What? How did I know your name? You think it's weird, huh? Well, I saw it on the back of your hoodie. Yeah, I am wearing a hoodie, you can see. I like Mitra. I like Mitra, and he's in wears a handsome bike. Gosh, meow, you're cute. So yeah, I'm wearing a hoodie. Um, I think that's a reference to Link's Awakening because folks know Link's name because it's written on her shield, which is kind of weird if you think about it. See you around, young. So how have you been, young? What? I don't know your name. Okay. Um. Okay. I thought you would take the biking shoes, but maybe not. West Beach, East Forest, Southeast Rainy Area, North Temple Grounds, Northwest Chasm. Can I take this bike? No. Some dirt here. Oh yeah, this is an interesting little quirk. Uh, if you get some dust and put it on water, it stays together for some reason, and you can use it as a raft. Like, why? It doesn't make sense. Dirt, it should fall apart if you do that. But no, this is how this is how you actually cross water, like at a decent rate. If you were just walking on the water, you will sink into it, like it's a swamp or something. But if you're standing on a piece of dirt, you're completely fine. It's it's really weird. Iggy said I shouldn't go where it's unsafe. I'll see you later, young. Okay, um, yeah, Meow leaves you if you go, like, too far away from where they live, basically. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to do with these shoes. Um, a pair of shoes for biking. Well, I know one person in this game who likes biking, and I tried to give her the shoes, and she didn't seem interested, so... Maybe there's something else I need to do with them, but I don't know what. Um. Oh, there we go. It's working now. Maybe I had to, like, not have Meow with me? Wow, are those the biking shoes from Finty's shop? You're giving them to me? Thanks, Young. I really appreciate it. Here, try out my old shoes in return. Uh, I think you'll find them really useful. There's an engraving on the shoes that says, Press B to jump. <gasps> Jumping. I've never understood that though, because there's no B anywhere on the shoes. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's like a rock's feather. Oh my gosh, I, did, I didn't know that would happen. I hadn't done that part in the game yet. 
Oh wow, I'm excited. I can jump. <laughs> I assume this gate is opened by getting the next key, but I don't have it yet, so I'll have to wait. Okay, so I have the jump shoes now. I assume if I look at them in the in the items here, it'll say these are jump shoes or something. A pair of spring-loaded shoes. Press B to jump. We can't jump over that, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, so uh, I can jump now, so that's cool. It doesn't really help me that much. I haven't really seen holes to jump over, like you see a lot in Link's, Aw Link's Awakening, like around the places where you get the rock's feather, and you're like, oh, I wish I could jump over that. And then you start being able to jump over that, and it's super exciting. Oh, I think I know what to do with them, actually. Hang on, if I go this way... So you can see the spikes here? Yeah, I can jump over them. You can actually damage boost past these spikes rather than getting the jump shoes, which is what I did earlier in my previous playthrough. But it, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we can't go that way. We can go this way, I believe. Let's see, there's a frog there. Uh, not much else. That doesn't look very helpful. Let's keep looking around. Oh, oh gosh, frame rate drops. This game doesn't seem to handle multiple projectiles very well, so if there's like a couple of enemies that shoot projectiles on the screen, it seems to get some slowdown. Which isn't great. Um, by the way, these currents do pretty much nothing. They do make you a bit faster, but you can go against them without much trouble, as you can see. Is there a reason to go up there? There's like a little cliff ledgy thing there. Hmm. Are you a talkable? Yeah. Olive. Hi, I'm Olive the Rabbit. I have so much cereal left to eat. I love cereal. Okay, so that's kind of a shortcut, and we can go this way. Okay, these things shoot out projectiles. Yeah, you can see the frame rate's dropping again. I don't know why that is. It, uh, it's not good. Um, it does make the game a little tricky to play in areas that have projectiles. It's just if you have multiple like critters that have projectiles. Oh, I got a card of Meow. That's cute. Uh... Okay. Um, is that all I have to do in there? I guess so. I was kind of hoping to find the next dungeon or something, but apparently not. Okay, there's some holes to jump over. I'm betting I need to go over there. Okay, there we go. Okay. So let's jump over these holes. Like that. And get on this raft. Which is just a piece of dirt, because that's how rafts work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm making a lot more progress now, because I know what I'm supposed to be doing. It took me quite a bit of figuring out to realise I was supposed to take the cat to get the box from that one guy. Because it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Oh my, this looks scary. Uh, it's not actually that scary. It's pretty easy. <laughs> do, 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 do. So yeah, you can damage boost over these spikes, which means you wouldn't really need the shoes to do any of this except for the holes. But obviously it's a lot easier. Uh, with the shoes, because you can just jump over everything. Okay, we got some frogs here. Probably gonna cause some frame rate drop because there's multiple projectile launching enemies, which is annoying. There we go. What are you doing here, little slime? In this little hole by yourself. 
There's a bat. Now there's not a bat anymore. Now there's lots of bats. And a frog and wolf. I think it's a wolf anyway. It's hard to tell because of the art style. Got a broom and shoes that let me jump. <laughs> okay, uh, slime's here. Uh, I'll probably start wrapping up soon. I don't want the video to run too long, then realize, you know, it messed up again and I wasted my time. That would suck. I got a card. Oh, it's it's Bicycle Girl. I assume girl. Like, I mean, the game hasn't really indicated. But it's a bunch of cards, which is great. I'm guessing the dungeon is... No, not here. Hmm. It's gotta be here somewhere. This way? No. Hmm. Well, that's surprising. Uh, I guess I can set out a raft over here and look this way. Oh, hello. I can press that button. Boop. That opens a shortcut, which is always nice. Uh, but then I'm back here again. Um. Okay, I can keep going this way, which I haven't done yet. There is a bat over there. Ow. Got hit by a bat. Now I am sad. of dirt anymore, so I might be in some trouble. Um, I'm going to keep walking this way and see if I can find something. There we go, there's some dirt. Uh, you can't take dirt across screens, but if you're already on a dirt raft, it, it goes to the next screen. It's kind of weird. Uh, sign here. The sign points to the east, but the words on it are faded. So yeah, there's a lot of like wandering around by the looks of things. It's probably just that I don't really know where I'm supposed to be going. But, you know, maybe the game should indicate that a little bit more clearly. To give me an idea of where I should be going. On the other side of this wall now. Get some dirt, put it in the water, then stand on it. It becomes a raft. It doesn't make sense, but don't question it. You can sail down the river on your raft. Don't get bitten by a bat. Oh, that's interesting. You can take it from one screen to another because there's just a tiny bit of water that you can row over it with. Interesting. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna press the switch, I'm not this far. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they need to change to make this clearer. There's just a lot going on that you have to do to get through all these different paths. Maybe if they just marked the spot you're trying to get to, so you had an idea of, like, which way you should be trying to go. Obviously you have to weave around and stuff because of the kind of maze-like structure of this overworld, but... Eh, maybe it'll work. Uh, yes, I will go press that switch on this side. Thank you. And it's another shortcut. I can't read this sign. Yeah, the words on it are faded. Okay, so that gets me somewhere. Where am I? Okay, that's a mushroom. <laughs> it wobbles. Uh, we got some more bats.
So yeah, I think I've sort of expressed my thoughts on this game as we were talking. Uh, did I just see something? Hmm. As I was playing, but yeah, I really like the look of this. I just... I have a few frustrating aspects to it. I do wish it had proper borders, like Undertale and other games that are designed to be square and run on this sort of console. Um, I also wish I could adjust the controls so that, you know, B is um, sword and I use something else for jump. Uh, y doesn't do anything yet, but I'm guessing I'll equip items to that slot once I get the ability to do that. I don't know what that thing is, but I think I'll direct with it, so... I also can't attack in midair yet, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking the look of this. Um, I do think it needs to be a bit clearer about what I'm supposed to do when. Uh, because, yeah, I, there was a lot of confused wandering around to figure out what I was supposed to do with the various things. Uh, west, land, lake, south, then east, cliffs. Okay, so that, that's kind of helpful, but I don't know if I want to go to either of those places, which is a little uh, annoying. Here's a button. Okay, so this is the first dungeon. That's the first dungeon there. So I've just unlocked some more uh, path up here, which is useful. So yeah, you want to hit every one of these you get come across just so you can hit the switch if you need to. I don't know why you have to hit the switch, it doesn't really make any sense. Thorax. Oh, it's it's the thorax. I am the thorax. I speak for the bees. Their fate is uncertain. It's not the bees' knees. Some colonies' workers have all took to flight. These colonies die then. It's no pretty sight. Oh dear. That doesn't sound good. Ah. this say? I'm afraid I may be stuck on this tiny corner forever. Oh no. You can make a raft like I did. There's some dirt there. I mean, you're a rock. You probably don't know how to build a raft. Or how to move. So, you might have some trouble, but that's what I did and it worked, so... Yeah, these areas are a little confusing, I would say. Granted, Link's Awakening does have a lot of confusing moments as well. I think maybe they were deliberately aping that aspect of the game, but it's not one of the better aspects of the game in the first place, so maybe better not to include it in your own game. Crixen. Hey, you big bully. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not a bully. wandering around in the forest. Granted, I'm killing all the bats I see, but they're just bats. I'm guessing I can get rid of that rock later. Anyway, um, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. I hope I gave a bit of an idea of what this game is like. I'm, I am very intrigued. Um, um, I do wish it had more accessibility options, and I do wish it had border options, and I also wish it had control mapping options, and I also wish it had some sort of waypoint system to make it a little clearer what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so I have a variety of complaints, but I am really intrigued, and I look forward to playing more of this title, so I'm glad I have it, uh, and I'll be playing more of it. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye! <laughs>